What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back from New York City. Of course, uh, we're here in the MLG studios, myself and Mr. Axelab. Of course, my name is Axel Toss, and we're watching Day 1, Season 1, WCS America Premier League. We already have one player that is qualified for the round of 16, is, and his name is the STC from Team Complexity. Congrats to him taking out Snoot. Of course, Snoot uh, falling to the lower bracket, I guess we'll call it. He's That's still right. Of he course, if more. you look at the, the group standings, you right. can see here, like you said, STC 2 0 advances you round of 16. Uh, Snoot just behind him at 1 to 1. And then both Vibe and, uh, Vibe and uh, sorry, Theognis are both 0 and 1 right now. So they're going to fight to see which one of them can, can tie it up to 1 to 1 mm -hmm. and, and get, then go up against Snoot for that last spot. Of course, Theognis versus Vibe is going to be. Uh, team Kill, unfortunately, they're both on Team Root Gaming, but I guess the good news is one of them will advance on uh, to play against, uh, of course, Snoop. Uh, but before we get into this matchup that I'm really looking forward to be between Theognis and Vibe, Full Sail University is the official education partner of MLG, so if you're into graphic design, um, video production, stuff like that, you want to get more interested or you want to get more involved, want to find out what's your next step, go ahead and check out fullsale.edu slash MLG. They'll have you fill in some information about what you're after, and uh, then they'll send some information back to you, and you can find out if Full Sail is the proper fit for you. Again, Full Sail is the official education partner of MLG. So that being said, both players in the lobby, I'm going to ask if they're ready. Theognis versus Vibe, Root versus Root, a best of three to determine who's going to be knocked down to the Challenger League, and who's going to be moving on to face off against Snoot to decide again who gets that second spot in the round of 16. It's a very important matchup. Uh, another TVZ, interestingly enough. We have two Terrans and two Zergs. And we haven't seen a mirror match yet. Right. We have two Terrans and two Zergs in the group, and we've only had TVZs, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Though I like mirror matches too. I'm just saying it's a pretty awesome coincidence. It, it is. It is. And you know, if if uh, if Theognis wins this, there will never be a mirror matchup in the entire group. You're right. It's kind of because we had... That'd be yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how things work out yeah. uh, sometimes. But, you know, on paper, I have to say Vibe is, is probably the favorite. I mean, he's, he's the WCS USA yeah. winner, second place WCS NA. Uh, he, he's definitely on paper the favorite here, uh, at least 2012 WCS I'm talking about. Oh, excuse me, we're now in 2013. Sure. Uh, but Theognis, we saw, he had some, some great play against Newt. There was just a couple mistakes. You know, and, and Snoot, he's, if you make a little mistake against him, he jumps on it and he just rips you to shreds, Quite mostly literally. with speeding claws. Quite literally. Um, but no, I agree. It's As far as if I'm trying to predict a winner, you know, um, both of them had their, their signs of brilliance. You know, they both had great moments in their respective games, just weren't able to pull, down, pull out victories. I mean, Vibe took out SEC in the first game. Yes. And SEC had to come back and win two in a row. So we know Vibe has those fancy timing attacks underneath his belt. But we also know Theognis... You know, has a solid ability to defend against those. Oh, I mean, yeah, uh, it's new tried on Whirlwind, and, and the first attack failed. Yep. The second attack, really, it only succeeded because the Agnes assumed there wasn't a second attack and moved out. And uh, his, it, it was just, it was a scouting error, not uh, executing a defense error. Right. Because when he knew he had to execute a defense, he did it convincingly. It was just he didn't know he had to do that second time. Just that next step. Yeah. Uh, uh, scouting is so important in StarCraft 2. Of course, guys, the players are ready. The first map is going to be on Daybreak again. A best of three to determine who's going to advance on to play against Snoot and who's going to fall down to the Challenger League of WCS America Season 1. Here we are in Game 1 in the top right-hand location. We have the Blue Zerg player, the defending WCS champion of USA. Representing Team Root Gaming. He is Vibe. His opponent in the bottom left-hand location. It's the Red Terran player. Who, very mechanically sound guy. Loves those macro builds. Loves those fast command centers. He fell down 0-2 in his first match. Can he take down his opponent and teammate? He is Theognis. The two Americans going to battle. The two root players. They have practiced plenty, I am sure, against one another. There's actually, um, there's inter-clan matches in Root. It's kind of like a ranking system to decide who's going to go out in team leagues and stuff. I wish I knew the results that's off my head right now, but I know that exists, so the point I'm making is these guys definitely play each other quite a bit. Who knows? Oh, well, I don't think they, they practice with each other, knowing they're in the same group, as far as once they heard about these groups. Oh, yeah. Right, but yeah. Um, you know, they definitely have that history. 
So, so Theognis not going for command center first. He really utilized that uh, quite a bit against Snoop, but this time going for the Reaper. Um, you know, he might be hoping Vibe would assume Command Center first because it, that is one of Theognis' favorite builds. I, I can tell you that, um, especially against, he does it a lot against Protoss as well as against Zerg. He loves those Command Centers. Uh, but Vibe, you know, knowing that there may be some mind games that play on his teammate versus teammate, mm -hmm. going for that early scout soon is exactly what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I think Vibe did this against SCC. I mean, it also encouraged him to go for... Um, a very fast third hatchery before pool. Once he spotted his opponent, was going for a gasless expo. But this time, going to be spotting that gas immediately, placing down that pool. That's a pretty cool trick, though. I feel like Vibe scouts with that drone, and then you know decides, okay, if he puts down a gas, I'll, I'll take that spawning pool. If he doesn't put the gas and is going for a fast command center, hell, I'll, I'll take a quick third hatchery and go for that spawning pool uh, a little bit later. So, pretty cool move there from Vibe. Really values that intel. Wants to know exactly what his opponent is doing b b before making those important decisions. Definitely an uh, uh, interesting play. And you know what was kind of cool? This is the first time we've seen Daybreak so far in this group. That's true. Which is uh, a little bit interesting. Daybreak's usually a very popular map, but I'm at, it's actually refreshing to see it being used a little bit less often here. And, and it, it's a pleasant surprise. We, we do get to see it, of course. This, is, uh, uh, this map, map has been around for a bit. Yes. Um, both these guys. Actually, interestingly enough, I think the next ladder season, Daybreak is not going to be in it. You know, it, and it's, been a part of it, it's a good map, it. but, y you know, I, I wouldn't complain too much if we keep keep the map rotation going. Um, that being said, though, it's, like, it's, it is, you know, as far as map history goes, it's probably one of the, the best one overall for as long as time it's been around. Great building uh, construction he, by Vibe. Oh, this time I was going to try to see if he'd send the lings across the map. Yeah, no. Like he did against the SEC, but this time keeping the lings behind. Well, you know, he also... Too. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. Maybe because Theognis knows Vibe yeah, sends that's really cool. across the map. <laughs> and maybe because Vibe knows that Theognis keeps knows. the back. <laughs> yeah. This is like end level mind games going I'm on here. I'm telling you, man, when it's team versus team, the yeah. craziest mind games happen. Because, again, <laughs> if you think about all the experience these guys... That's why when you ask a pro player, you know, if they're playing a teammate, that someone asks, like, oh, how do you expect the games to go? They're usually going to say it's probably going to be really weird because yeah. we're doing so many mind games. <laughs> and, and sometimes they do so many things to fake each other out. Look they at that. There's the Reaper. I, that's definitely why Theo just kept the Reaper back. He knows about the sneaky yep. Ling play from five. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. Theognis, of course, uh, even if he's not going command center first, he's going to get that fast third CC because that's that's what he does, right? Yes. Uh, very, very macro focused. Play. Vibe is well aware of this fact. Yes. Uh, so the question is, is Vibe going to... Yeah, okay, he's, he's taking guys off gas right after he started uh, the uh, link speed. Mm -hmm. So he's definitely be going for a third hatchery of his own fairly soon. Mm -hmm. He does have to make sure he can deal with the Hellions. Of course, speedings can, can deal with them fine, but you have to have a good number of speedings. And you know, uh, what's really key is trying to set up a flank on the Hellion Reaper uh, force that yes. uh, is going to be sent out right now. You know, we actually saw that happen in a match from uh, the qualifiers for this tournament. I don't know if you remember it. It was EG versus EG. There's your hint. Alive versus Revival? No. Close. Isn't that, tr isn't that funny how you say... Jadong yes. no, uh, versus the Muslim. Yes, you remember that? Yes. It was I on this know. map too. Um, where Jadong was able to get a brilliant flank on the Hellions and, and Reaper. Some people might say, oh, it's Daybreak. There's like way too much space as far as like how do you get a, a, a flank if, if, if Phoenix coming here. You know, you can pull some links across the back and try to go for that flank. It's yep. definitely doable. We saw that happen in the Muslim versus Jadong. If you missed that match, check out youtube.com slash official MLGSC2. It's in 1080p right now on the YouTube channel. Uh, it's really key to have the, the foresight to try to set those up because, uh, like you said, it's not something you can set up spontaneously. It has to be pre-planned here. A little bit of a speedling run by, uh, but one Marauder in the bunker says, no, thank you, speedlings. Uh, that won't really do much. Yep. Uh, the Harass, on the other oh. hand. Oh, the that's a good amount of mining time. Yeah, not bad. It did more than I thought it would. Um, and 24 more speedings being built. Yeah, These ones right. aren't for the attack. They're there to, you know, kill this force here, just bothering the third. And, and that's, you know, that's the, the right amount of speedings. Because you have to have enough that you can surround them. Here he goes. And then you have to... It. Oh, he's doing it. He's like it around the back. The oh, Ogden smells something in the wind. And he's going to retreat. What a clever guy. Clever guy. Dude. You know, they, they know each other so well. He knows exactly when Vibe is going to build yeah. those speedings, when he's going to send them out. Knows when to pull back to that watchtower. You know, uh, yeah. this time, uh, Vibe going for the double evolution chamber instead of just one.
Remember, he would go for one, get carapace, and then kind of decide as the game went along which way he wanted to go as far as, okay, do I want to go for the missile attack route with roaches and hydras, or do I want to go with lings? Oh, but this time, just going to. The speed room. needs left to play, and, and then the drones oh, are. There's nothing drones. to keep the hellings at bay. There's some lings that are going to come out and, and try to deal with this. There's queens Two here queens. as well. Meanwhile, lings got to be careful. There's widow mines. Oh, raise a deep ball, raise a deep ball. Oh, going in there. He's trying to make it through the openness at the last second, Ooh. raising up that deep oh. oh, my gosh. There was that a fourth Widowmine that I did not see. You know, that was actually 11 the 11 kills on that Widowmine. That was insane mind game defense. Right, because... Did he, he have it on Burrowed? No, no, no. He, he didn't raise the depot, right? Because he wanted Vibe to send in a few Zerlings to think he would detonate the mine. Ah. Then when Vibe sent in the rest, he would raise the depot because he needed an extra mine and then all the Zerlings got caught. That was a really, really well thought defense. Like, I, I would have panicked and just raised the depot in the beginning, right? It's a trap. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was a trap. It was a really clever trap, my, too. I think that's my favorite Spider-Man quote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll stop. Okay. Um, so, Bailing's in production here from Vibe. And, all right, let's think about what's happening. The Ognis is going to be really happy. I mean, that, that early exchange. Like, look at the resources lost. 35 to 3. 974 to 200 in favor of Theognis. He's going to take that third. He's not going to be feeling frightened at all. He still has his Reaper Hellion Force as well. He still has control. Of his, yeah, he still has his opponent's watchtower. Yeah, he's watching. He's making sure he knows exactly what's going on. Now he's giving it up uh, or leaving one Hellion there. Of course, this is the point when he knows those, that force would die. So really, you know what? Theognis, knowing when to retreat and when to... He's playing a really heads-up game. Armory timing is very good as well. Just only a, a couple seconds on the late end. All right, let me see where that scan was. At the third, third check yeah. on drone count potentially. Maybe additional tech structures, yeah. weirdly enough. That'd be over You're, there. I think it's mostly he's looking for the drone count yeah. to tell if it's um how many links available. Yeah, if you know, it's a mass to you know, basically there, there's a lot of like two and a half base all ins Zerg or not all ins, but like timings to the nine of tier and third. Um and, and you can tell by the drone count at the third if you're going for that. I like how Vibe is an overseer with this, just to make oh, sure yeah. he knows Oh, early burrow too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, Theognis. this could do a lot of damage. He needs to wait. He's gonna wait for the perfect moment. The Bailey's gonna discharge oh. onto the reason now Vibe coming with a bunch of links. No widow mines out here getting a great surround. This is exactly what Vibe needed. And he's gonna start what to equalize turnaround. that resources lost tab. Oh, widow mine. Oh, oh, great split by Vibe. All right, there's a few more in here. Look, Vibe still splitting up the units, still terrified. Has the Overseer there looking out for those Widow Mines. Really wants to try to deny this third base. Keep that mining from happening. Has a bunch of Lings in the area. Might turn a bunch into Bane Lings. But no, making four Investors, starting up 2-2 two -two behind this. More and 2-2 two -two's, two -two's going to be slightly ahead, but I don't think it's going to open up any time for either player. Very, very even as far as upgrades go. Yeah. Diognis now adding the second factory, so we'll probably start the Trilling Claws upgrade shortly. Gosh, these Burrowed Bane uh, i got to be ever watchful of, this, of yes. this, uh, these Burrowed Bane Lings. Deck. Still looking for those Widomines. There's about three in that composition. Gosh, the Ognis, if a barrel is oh, I think, is he trying to, they, they won't go over him. Oh, he moved, he moved units up. Oh, he's in the legs back. Five is another uh, Baneling bomb. The Ognis needs to be aware of that. Widomines getting some decent shots off onto these links, trying to track down these SCPs. If only he had Banelings here. And that, that really wasn't, wasn't worth it. Oh, Widomines. Gosh, Vibe has to be so careful. Vibe is, he's actually getting kind of, oh no, more. If, if he can kill these Widow Mines, I don't think he'll be able to do the Bios here now to save them. Marines coming down here, but Vibe taking down these Widow Mines before retreating, but taking even more losses. Meanwhile, though, he's got a fourth base. He's keeping his opponent at home. He's burrowing these Infestors. Going for a Snoot type play. Snoot tried to go for those burrowed Infestors against the SGC. And yep. now we'll have to see how much damage he can do with this. Oh, sneaky, sneaky Infestors. All right, so detection. Any turrets? No. Any ravens? <laughs> no. <laughs> I like how you laugh when you said that. <laughs> All right, we got to drop heading to that third base. Meanwhile, the investors. Oh, gonna unburrow and nab some marines. The others can't be happy about that. Getting some more fungals down to scan, and the marines won't die. Okay, one more pressure. I don't think that was worth it. Oh I'll no, losing all those investors. What a disaster. The same time the drops deflected, but uh, I mean, it's just bio losing. The minute that got away, whereas the important units for the Zerg there, the investors, they were yeah, totally wiped out. I'm not sure if that was worth it, honestly. Um, oh my god, he's going to be able to take those Widowmines, though. That's great. That's great for Mr. Vibe. It, it is. That, that okay. is extremely great. Two scans. He, he needs to keep the Widowmine count up because this is a lot of Vainies with speed. Oh, they're, they're each going a different can he direction. Can the back. Backs if he needs to? I think he can. Yeah, he's very fast. But actually... Vibe is counterattacking. Okay, we're going to have a lot of action going across this screen. We have Vibe sending a bunch of lings across the map. Meanwhile, Theognis attacking into his opponent's side of the map. Widowmines, some of them are here, but 
a lot of SCVs getting taken down. And across the map, we see the engagement happening in the fourth base. That's going to be taken out. Meanwhile, Vibe going to the natural expansion. Not a lot of Widowmines here. Valen's coming forward as well. Uh, so many SCVs are in the natural expansion. The Valen's going straight for them. This could be a disaster for these SCVs. And all the SCVs are going to fall. The carnage is ridiculous. Up to 56 workers killed for Vibe. But meanwhile, the bio attacking across the map. The Valen's going to eventually not hold that off. How's it going over there, Mr. Nick? Uh, the third base fell for Vibe. But I think he's going to hold his natural. He killed enough of the army out. But... Uh, Vibe's got to basically keep the Agnes down because off only two bases, it's so hard to play with Zerg. Now, he did kill a lot of SCVs, but still three Orbitals are around for the Agnes. He's down to 19 Harvesters, trying to keep producing those Marines. Still has a, a large majority of his army alive across the map. The Bailings oh, at least coming before the Widowmines have already fungal. detonated. There's a Fungal onto the Marines, and the is going to try to retreat, but everything should get taken out, I think. No. No. Hero, Marauder, and about six Marines there. Still alive. Three Widow Mines, too. Seven more Bailings in production here from Vibe. He's up 85 to 76, but the Ognis is going to start replenishing SCVs, taking a command center in the middle as this is happening. I mean, if the Ognis can still drop mules to reestablish his economy very well, this yes. is why a lot of people say he shouldn't base rate it here. And Vibe, though, his ace is at bottom right base. If Vibe would be... Oh, my gosh, yeah, you He right. would be out of the game if you had the bottom That's right. Such like, a good it would literally be game over. As it is... He's still, I think, in trouble. I mean, when you go for a Terran, they can lift their orbitals. Yeah. And they can retake those bases very, very fast. That's exactly what the Agnes has done here. The SCV explosions were pretty, though. They were. They, I mean, uh, they, were, they were great attacks, but I think the Agnes did get the better end, and he's pushing forward now to try to end it. Ah, oh, some Banelings trying to desperately be made. There's a scan to make sure there's no burrow shenanigans happening. The Banelings coming forward. Nice splitting there from the Agnes. Trying to close out his opponent, but such a close game here. Plus three is on the way here for Vibe, and Theognis has yet to start any 3-3 upgrades. I'm not saying that's going to change much. Yeah, there's the GG from Vibe. And Theognis takes game number one. Wow. Game. That was a great game. That was a lot you know, uh, I think it, it was a lot of back and forth there, but then when Vibe went for the counterattack and the base trade, uh, it's, it's a very, 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 very difficult to be tearing the base trade. Yeah, Vibe. You know, he had some fancy stuff in there. Like, he had the burrowed bands. Really cool seeing that. Uh, but, you know, Theognis throughout that game was able to be really cost efficient with those Widowmines. And, like, if you can master dealing with Widowmines as Zerg, you're going to be very happy. But that's a very hard trick to do. You have to constantly be splitting up your units with a lot of micro involved. And one misstep, you can find yourself losing a lot of links. I mean, in the very beginning there, we saw Theognis have those Widowmines and kind of, you know, it's a trap like, that kind of happened. And when you can kill a bunch of lings, like 20 to 30 lings in the early part of the game, that le makes you so comfortable because you feel like, all right, I have map control. I'm feeling good. I can take my third base. My opponent can't deny it. I'm going to have some time to set that up. And then from there, you know, Theognis had that momentum, just kept extending his lead, eventually pushed across the map. Vibe tried to go for the counterattack, but killed a lot of SCVs, but it was not enough. And There's there still the big SCVs left. Even when you kill the, the little <laughs> ones, there's the big ones that fly from the sky. Yeah. Uh, Vibe, unfortunately, lost his third base and his fourth base. Uh, he didn't have the big drones to help yeah, him. Yeah. There's no. No. There's no. And so he couldn't. He couldn't re her up to keep him along with. And, uh, and that's why, like, when you're trying to base, like, imagine if if Vibe had kept those units back or gone for a flank, if he had tried to he, take out the uh, a massive that, flank. Right. Been. Instead of going straight up to the economy. I don't know. Very interesting game, though. Again, StarCraft 2, very dynamic game. But um, we're having a lot of fun here on day one of WCS America Premier League Season 1. Currently, we have Theognis up 1-0 over Vibe in this loser's matchup. Game 2 is going to be coming your way after a quick break.